Good morning. It is certainly a blessing to be back together. The family here at West Hill this morning, we've had the wonderful opportunity to be part of the ministry fair and uh, hope that uh, you had the opportunity to learn a lot about the works which are happening here at West Hill, uh, to find a place for you to plug in, to uh, best utilize your particular set of skills. You know, none of us have the same set of skills, and so uh, it is great that we as a family of God can combine our uh, talents together, uh, can combine and pool our resource of wisdom and intellect and the, the skills which we do have and make the church or help the church flourish even more than if one of us or two of us were responsible for every work. So it's thankful and I have, uh, have that opportunity and good to see everyone here this morning. If you're visiting with us, we want you to know that you are welcome and wanted here at West Hill. Among all other things, we know that our first and foremost purpose is to glorify God. That includes our worship, which we do here. Here at West Hill, every Sunday when we come together, we seek to honor God by doing Bible things, the Bible way, for the Bible reason. And we invite you to be part of that. If that intrigues you or if that's something that you want to do, come do it with us as together we can all help one another get to heaven. Let me ask a question. Have you ever been in a place that, that you thought, I, I just don't fit in here? You felt like the, the proverbial fish out of water. No matter what happens or what, what the circumstance might be, you just know that you're not with the right people. Not that the other people are bad, just that uh, you feel out of place. I've been in restaurants one time, uh, it's, I guess it was about 11 years ago, I was going to say it was about 10 years ago, about 11 years ago, Julie and I were, were uh, turning uh, that age that we were 11 years ago, and we decided that we were going to go to this restaurant. We had a real good friends of ours that uh, uh, they, they had a birthday around the same age, and uh, the, uh, that man's name was Nick, and my name was Sam, and there was this restaurant in Dallas called Nick and Sam's, and we thought, hey, this is the place to go. Well, so we went to Nick and Sam's, and, uh, you know, there's some things that, you know, you, you walk in and you realize, wow, I'm way underdressed. You go to restaurants like that, I'm way underdressed. And, and they leave the steak on the table, you know, and they say, if you would like this porterhouse, and it was, it was the kind of porterhouse you dream about at night. It was, it was at least as thick as my hand. Oh, it was beautiful. And, you know, this, they say, you know, this serves, you know, you know six to seven people. I'm like, I serves one. I don't, I don't know who you're talking about. And then he tells you the price. And yeah, that's at six, seven people. <laughs> so far out of place. Just not my element. You know, sometimes we get in those situations where uh, uh, we're, we, we just don't quite fit in. Maybe we're not cool enough. We're not wealthy enough. or We're not pretty enough to fit in. And so uh, uh, we look for a way to, to get out. Or to fit in, one or the other. We either try to fit in, or we try to get out as quickly as possible. You know, the kingdom of heaven is a, a place that is, has very strict clientele. You know, it, it's, it's God Himself that sets the rules of how to get in, and he, he serves as the gatekeeper about those who would get into the kingdom and those who would get out. And in order to get in, you've got to fit into the kingdom of heaven. Nobody is going to crash the gates of the kingdom of heaven or close them when God has them open. In fact, he tells us that upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades or the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. When God opens the gates of heaven, they will stay open as long as God desires them to be open. Hell, death, the devil himself cannot come and close those gates. And at the same time, when God has those gates closed, hell and the devil cannot prevail against God and open the gates to a clientele that simply does not fit in. There will be no gate crashers in the kingdom of heaven. There is no one who is going to become the new gate keeper of heaven. God is not one day going to die or cease to exist and then someone else comes along and changes the rules and says, here's what it takes to get into heaven. So if we want to be part of God and of His kingdom, if we want to trust God to help us fit in, we must do what God wants. If you want into heaven, and let me assure you, you want into heaven, into this 
reunion with the Creator. To be in the presence of the Savior. Of those that we've loved long ago. Of those that we read about, of their stories in the Bible. And we know their histories and their personalities. And we want to be in that reunion. If we want in to heaven, we must allow ourselves to be fit for the kingdom of heaven. But you know, Jesus clearly warns us that there are some that do not fit into heaven. They are out of place. He says no one who puts his hand to, his pl to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of heaven. Luke 9 and verse 62. We've been engaged in a, in a prolonged study on, on just this verse, this paragraph of Luke. Because it reminds us about commitment. It reminds us about Christianity. And our theme this year is putting our hand to the plow. It's the ministry fair. Putting our hand to the plow. Finding a place where I fit into the kingdom of God. And where my talents serve in the kingdom of God. And he says, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back. And we know what it means to put our hand to the plow. Initially, it's the idea of obeying the gospel and come, becoming a Christian. But it means that we become part of the work of the church, this saving vessel. We put our hand to the plow. We know last week that, that looking back means to have a divided heart. One that longs for both heaven and the world. One that looks for the, 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 the things of the world, that, that, uh, the, the lust of the flesh and the, the lust of the eyes, the, the pride of life, and tries to embrace those things while at the same time looking toward heaven and saying, but I want God and I want righteousness. That divided heart is the downfall of a lot of Christians. And when that divided heart comes, we find that there are those who are not fit for the kingdom of heaven. The word fit, euthetos, means that, that we are appropriate. That we have been made worthy of something. The Greek word, in, in its, if you break it down, becomes well-placed. Jesus says if we have a divided heart, we are not well-placed when it comes to the kingdom of heaven. We are not in good standing, we might say, with the Father who is in heaven. And so Jesus tells us that there are some who are not fit for the kingdom of heaven. But the question then comes, how can we be sure that we are fit for the kingdom of heaven? How do we know that we are worthy to walk those streets of gold? How do we know that we are meet for the reunion in heaven? How do we know that we are part of God's saved? The first thing I would like for us to consider is that we must trust God to make us fit. I think sometimes we feel that if we plow enough straight rows and we keep our hand on the plow long enough that at the end of, end of time God is going to say to us, here is the reward that I owe you. That somehow in this life we have earned the right to go to heaven. But let me remind you, brothers and sisters, that all the plowing of the straightest rows does not make us fit for the kingdom of heaven. We are sinners of the highest degree. And that problem, that sin problem, has no place in heaven. You want to talk about fish out of water. Sin in heaven is fish out of water. It is not appropriate, it is not worthy, it is not fit to walk the heavenly realm. Sin has no place in heaven. And the simple fact is, we cannot deal with the sin problem on our own. We are not good enough, we are not strong enough or wise enough to do it on our own. And so what we learn is that God makes us fit for heaven. God makes us appropriate for this kingdom of heaven, His church. He places us in the church. Think about uh, Paul's prayer in Colossians chapter 1, beginning in verse 9, when he's praying about uh, uh, all the things, or he's reminding the Colossian brethren the things that he prays about. I always thought this was an interesting insight to Paul. You know, wh what is it about Christians that he likes to see? He says, From the day that we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with knowledge of His will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. 
Well, surely that makes us fit for the kingdom of heaven. When we have, when we have all the spiritual knowledge that we, that, that we could possibly have, we, we understand right from wrong, we understand what it takes to be a Christian, surely in that moment we are fit for the kingdom of heaven. Verse 10, he says, So as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing unto Him. Well, well, here we go. I, I have spiritual understanding and wisdom, but, but even more than that, I am walking worthy of the Lord. Surely then I am fit for the kingdom of heaven. Not so. Verse 10, he goes on, he says, Bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. I'm not just walking in the right way, but I am bearing in this life with my hands and my action these fruits which glorify and exalt the Almighty God. Surely then I am fit for the kingdom of heaven. Paul would say in verse 11, May you be strengthened with all power according to His glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy. Surely if my heart is excited by the fruit which I am bearing for God, then I am fit for the kingdom of heaven. But in verse 12, Paul would say, Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints of light. The word qualified is a synonym to the idea of fit, appropriate, or worthy. In all of those things which are important and cannot be overlooked, cannot be underestimated, in all of those things we are not made fit for the kingdom of heaven. No, it takes the hand of God to qualify us for the kingdom of heaven, for this inheritance with the saints in heaven. And we are told in Acts chapter 2 and verse 47 that as, as they were being saved, it says, And the Lord added unto them. The Lord is the one that makes us fit for the kingdom of heaven. Now surely we understand the relationship then. Putting our hand to the plow and not looking back. That's, those are things which we do. But it is God who makes us fit for the kingdom of heaven. The second thing I would have us to look at if we we're going to be sure that we are fit for the kingdom is that, that we understand that we know we are fit when we obey God. John writes in 1 John 2 and verse 3, By this we know that we have come to know Him. If we keep His commandments, we can know God by keeping His commandments. To know our salvation is to know that we have obeyed God. When He tells us in Ephesians 3, that His Spirit bears witness, I'm sorry, in Romans chapter 8 and verse 16, that His Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are sons of God. Well, that means that, that God's Spirit and His instruction of His Word telling us what we must do, and our spirit looking at those instructions and deciding if we have complied with God's direction, it bears witness with our spirit that we are sons of God. We know that we are His when we obey the Gospel. And that means that I have believed in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. That I am following after His will and His design. That I have turned away from my sins. A word which we refer to as repentance. We turn from sin. We turn from the old life. Justin, Justin Williams reminded us the other night, it's not that we are simply turning 180, but we are turning 90. We are turning toward heaven, leaving the world behind. Repentance. Confessing Him with our mouth that He may confess us before the Father. Being baptized for the remission of our sins. In that moment, our sins are washed away and God makes us fit for the kingdom of heaven. How do I know that I'm in the kingdom? Because I have obeyed His gospel. Anything short of that, my hand is not on the plow. And my eyes certainly are not heavenward. And then finally... How do I know? Well, we've got to stay the course. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, he says, I have, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. There is a commitment that God wants from each of us. We could say it this way. Don't let go, don't look back, and don't lay down. Don't let go of the plow if your hand is on it. Don't look back with a divided heart and wonder if that life would have been better. And don't lay down. I know life itself can be exhausting. 
can be hard. Christianity sometimes, not just life, but Christianity specifically can be hard to live sometimes. The world is out to get us. The devil is fighting on, against us. His demons are surrounding us and pulling us away. But don't let go. Don't look back and don't lay down. Don't give up yet. There is something ahead that awaits us. It is God beckoning us from the door. If tonight, you've, you've, or this morning, you've not obeyed the gospel, you've not come to Him in full submission, you've not put your hand on the plow, whatever synonym you want to call it, you are not saved. This morning, all things are ready for you to obey the gospel. If you're ready to come to Him, to love Him and serve Him for eternity, won't you come while we stand and while we sing?